All right, um, so I'm going to start with the lecture um, just because we talked about um, how you had some issues in lane against Gray Main here. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go over um, some of my observations in terms of what you could improve. Um, even if not winning the Shrine against Gray Main, putting him in a better position because I did see you make kind of a few um, decision-based mistakes. I think that um, your positioning was actually very good. Um, in terms of not dying, uh, you made a lot of really good, I mean, like even right here, so this is the very beginning of the game. Um, one of the biggest decisions I saw you make, I just kind of consistently, which was, um, which is just really easy to improve is your creep tumor placement, which I know that you had mentioned yourself in the chat, but, um, there's just some really obvious ones that I think you missed, which, um, one, uh, you don't have a creep tumor in your base at all right here. And you do, you do place one eventually, but I think it's closer to like the two or three minute mark, um, which is just late. I mean, having a creep tumor in here has, has obvious benefits, which is just like it puts creep right around this area. And this is where you're going to, you know, like you, this is where you're going to benefit from speed boost the most. <clears throat> you're not really getting any benefit from the vision here, but the speed boost to get away from like ganks at the last second, especially against someone like Greymane, who you're trying to get out of uh, melee range of just is really important and, and and it does help you escape a gank against diablo later in the game so i think it's really important especially like right here you see you have you have three charges which means you laid this one and then you just didn't lay one for 18 seconds which there's no real reason to not have it um there and then in addition i mean like this is a good creep tumor placement you want one in this bush and this bush which you do um because you need to see against ganks and even if you could um after you clear wave it'd be even more beneficial to come down and set one in this bush um because a lot of people set up ganks in this bush um or e even if not in this bush specifically like in this area so that you get vision on this bush um just so you can catch th those rotations even like a few seconds earlier and get out which really helps if you're contesting the shrine because if you have your creep if you have creep here and here um and you can see them coming from here there's virtually no way anyone can gank you like you'll always be able to get back to your base when contesting the shrine um, in addition, which again, and you do set one here in, in a little bit, but um, there's no real reason to not want to have, have one here either, just because it's actually possible for, um, even like with your, just your creep tumor here, until you set one here, it's actually, I mean, even with it there, Diablo can rotate up here, all the way over here, and then into this bush, and then he can just wait until you step up, and then push you in and gank you. I mean, it's a pretty easy kill if they do it correctly, obviously, they and they probably, they don't take advantage of that specific idea, but really anyone can do that. Anyone can go around and get here without vision if you don't have a creep tumor here. Um, so those are the kind of most important spots. You want to have a creep tumor here, probably here, like anywhere in here, but specifically here because it's near the shrine. And then these bushes and here. This is where you want vision and speed movement. It's just important. Um, and all those things just help you make decisions better. Uh, I think a few times here you, you probably get get hurt because you don't know what to do because you don't have enough information um here is good you, you avoid this gank i'm not going to say too much about it because i want to get on to other things so here's kind of another just general mistake you make um because you have to understand your matchup i think a little bit better especially with Greymane, who's not a traditional solo laner um what he's trying to do against you in this matchup is get kill pressure on you right because he needs these walls to survive he doesn't have any sustain the only sustain he gets is from the globes. So your prime objective is to kill these structures, which doesn't give it, which gives him less places to retreat to from your um, summons, and to make and try and force him off globes as best as possible. I think one thing you do entirely too much is actually clear the wave. Um, you just don't need to. He's not even trying. Like so, here um, is a kind of a prime example of what happens throughout this matchup in that you push in. And you take the way and you kill the wave under under towers under his towers which means that you have to go under towers to get the to get your own globe otherwise he gets both of them um which just puts you obviously a puts you insanely out of position if they rotate anyone up they're gonna get the gank on you um and two uh it you know you have to you end up wasting your e here to um block the tower shots when you really 
want it to be poking gray main because he doesn't again he doesn't have any sustain outside the globes if you can poke him down so low that he can't safely come and get his globe you just automatically win the matchup really hard so right here you come and you use actually all four of your banelings on this wave when i think you should have just thrown it onto this tower because this tower is your primary objective Ooh. So he comes, he's trying to intimidate you, but you can see he stands outside. He's not trying to clear the wave. And then you throw all your banelings in. And you even throw your hunter killer out. Which, if you're not throwing your hunter killer on him, it's just not correct. But you can see he forces you out, and he actually gets a good chunk on you. If you would have saved your hunter killer for him, and your E for him, um, I mean, he would have had considerably less health. And this, I mean, look, look how much damage you did with even just a few banelings barrages than E. Like, just more damage if you would have thrown all four of your previous banelings into this this tower would almost be dead and then it kind of happens again where he he comes and contests the shrine and you think about an aggressive rotation you decide against it you come down and then you clear the wave and then he comes out and you go up <laughs> okay that was way too much information at once but basically like you could have easily during this period of time where he comes up and gets the shrine you can just kill this right he's up there He's not doing anything. There's the first time at two minutes that so you set this um, set this creep teamer. But you could have even killed that during that entire time spent that he was there. Assuming we had vision, I'm not sure if we did. Um, and that happens kind of a few times. Like, And, and keep in mind that it, as soon as you get this, then it's going to be way easier to get this. And like, you know, you're not paying attention to where you're throwing those. You want to be hitting this tower. I don't know if I, I couldn't tell if the, I don't think all the all, the damn, all of those splashed onto this. You can just see like you should be using your E and your W to poke out Grammy, and they cost a lot of mana. Using them to clear waves is just not effectual, especially since you took Medusa blades. So you have entirely efficient wave clear with your auto attacks and W alone. Again, you're throwing Banelings kind of into the middle of the wall there. Does splash onto the tower a bit, but... Okay, so these are just kind of the moments leading up to and the fight that kind of is um, a momentum swing in this game. Um, it's... We make a lot of good decisions and we make a lot of just really obvious mistakes, uh, which I think are fairly correctable. Um... Because firstly, uh, um, I know I think this is the the fight that Hayes was talking about in Discord that I um, kind of disagree with here. Because we have our knights, they have their knights. Mage is giving us spell armor over here, and then you you and Electra, Bay, Bay and Electra actually come up um, and clear their mage, which is good because then they don't have the spell armor for this upcoming fight. Um, and for the most part during this fight, we fight inside the circle. Obviously, uh, like I'm Genji. I don't the entire time. Sometimes I have a D-Shield or whatever. Um, but for the most part, we, we fight in here, which is a major reason as to why we win the fight. Um, then there are also major reasons as to why we don't secure a kill. And I'll go over those fairly quickly. Okay, so first thing that happens... They actually, Diablo engages into us, which is a mistake by him. Um, and then Lee Ming, oh, I don't have everyone's vision. That's fine. Um, so I'm on, still on Electra. So we can see Electra's cooldowns. We see you, Electra. Um, so Lee Ming's going to come into this fight. And Bay's going to burrow charge. He's going to try and burrow charge under Rhaegar. And then he's going to miss his, his stun. And then he's going to cocoon Rhaegar. Uh, which is, he should have just cocooned Li Ming. I mean, if you cocoon Li Ming here, then they, then we can just go on to Rhaegar, because Rhaegar's wildly out of position. Um, and then they don't have anything realistically to burn the cocoon with, and then once the Rhaegar's dead, they just can't even contest. But instead, you cocoon the Rhaegar. I'd, um, I'd Dragon Blade and D-Shield, um, and go on to their backline. But I can't really get a lot of damage onto the Li Ming because of her Force Armor at 1. And um, Greymane also just... I, I mean, he's... Uh, Kel'Thas is not in position to get damage onto him. Because they do have... Um, 
yeah, he just he throws out a few flame strikes that just can't quite um, get there, and he can't throw his stuns out because this whole minion wave is blocking his stuns. Um, so it's just kind of, I mean, and we're four v five here, so again, we should win. We're fighting in in twenty percent spell armor four v five. We should win the fight. We do. We push them off. Um, but then obviously I, I make the mistake where I die behind the fort, but l l we're just going to kind of go over this. So right there you burrow charge. Um, Li Ming pops up here. That should be in just an instant, uh, an instant cocoon. But you cocoon the Rhaegar. And then I Dragon Blade. He, he apox. And during that apoc. Um, Li Ming's just immediately gonna burn this. Now I'm Dragon Bladed. You can see Li Ming's not taking a lot of damage. Rhaegar's low on health, but, um, he's in wolf form, and Rocky's just getting kind of fucked up here. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that was, it was, that was entirely because, um, the Diablo was all the way over here, so that was kind of just shitty positioning, but with the Cocoon on, with the Cocoon on the Li Ming, the Rhaegar would still be in the Cocoon. Uh, I mean, the Rhaegar would already be dead, and she would still be in the cocoon, because they wouldn't have anything to burn it. A little bit of a late cleanse, but it's hard in the moment. But yeah, so right here, we've already won the fight. I mean, we did scare them off, but Rhaegar should be dead. I mean, Rhaegar just clearly was wildly out of position, without anything to burn. Uh, with with Li Ming in the cocoon, it's, I don't think it's too much of a worry. I'm not even sure I would have had the Dragon Blade. Um... Yeah, that's, I mean, those are the two big mistakes we made, essentially. Um, and then, obviously, I come in, and I get a little overzealous. Probably frustrated because we didn't get a kill. Just an obvious mistake on my part where I go in. Okay, Rocky goes and get this, gets the shrine. This actually isn't necessary. Um, you don't need to get the shrine here, because they don't, I mean, they have bottom, but they don't top. You could have been here sieging the whole time. So that's, I mean, that's obvious, right? But we do get this fort, but then they get the Dragon Knight, which swings swings the, the game a little bit. Okay, so um, I'm gonna have to call Woody out for this. I know that uh, it's something, positioning something you need to work on, but um, so right here, it's kind of a confusion because we, we take this camp, and then uh, me and Woody start rotating, start coming this way to go bottom, and then Hayes calls top. So Hayes rotates up this way um, safely, and I, I'm Genji, uh, I, I'm just not really that worried about myself because I know I can just dash away if they try and get onto me. I mean, but, so I rotate up this way, um, and then Woody, you kind of just follow me up here. Uh, and then Diablo's in this bush, which I want to touch on because I did say earlier um, about um, Electra having vision on this bush because it's just like an obvious gank, especially for Diablo with that wall right there, which is exactly what happens. So, um, you'll see. We come down here. Hayes calls top. We all head up there. Well, I head up there. And then <laughs> Woody not far behind. And it's just an easy heal for them, because there's just no way you can get out from there. We do what we can to save you, but you guys overlap the shield and arcane barrier there. I think I think if you guys don't overlap that, you probably survive there. Um, probably just need to be a little bit more clear with your callouts. But, yeah, it's just an easy, easily fixable mistake. Understand, if you're in a mobile character, that you, you, you have to rotate a little bit safer. You can't take risks like that. Um, I, I understand that we I rotated up there. Um... Which, I probably shouldn't be either, but as a mobile character, you're a little bit safer. Um, so just just take care with that. <clears throat> um, okay, this I want to highlight not because it's a bad play, but because it's actually really good teamwork. Um, I mean, it's sloppy, don't get me wrong. Um, so one thing that happens, so we, we're trying to get a gank with this small fail bottom. Um, I missed my swift strike, don't get as much damage on him as we can. He escapes with a little bit of health. Um, but you guys do a really good job keeping vision of him over here, and I, it allows me to go in and get the kill. Um, and then as I'm escaping, I, I kind of escape a little recklessly, 
<clears throat> and Diablo, Rhaegar, and Ming are able to get onto me. So right here, this gets me vision. So I'm able to go in and get the kill. Um, then the Diablo, Ming, and Rhaegar are up here. And they try and get the jump on me. Now I could just switch strike out right away, but I don't think I'm in danger. Um, and that Diablo just gets a really nice shadow charge. But right there, Haze gets a really nice cleanse on me. Gets a heal and some armor. And um, you guys throw out some stuns. It's just really nice reactive play. That's I mean, you can see the whole team's up here now, except um, Electra is defending this push, which is correct. Um, just really overall, this is actually one of the better plays. I mean, better simple plays that we made in the game because we get the kill and then we just leave, um, which is something we do far not often enough. Um, so we have the kill for this objective phase, which is really nice. Everyone goes and gets their health and mana, and um, this is kind of a better kind of turn of events for us. Okay, so this is the second to last, well, I believe the second to last fight in the game. Um, could be wrong, but this is kind of an inadvertent fight. They get vision on a new brack here, I probably with Li Ming, and um, Uther comes into the bush with him, and they kind of engage onto you guys before everyone's there, um, which could have gone horribly wrong, considering we're up a person. Um, we end up taking the 4v4 fight, and there's actually, uh, we come within an inch of getting a kill. Unfortunately, um, one of the major problems here was uh, Kael'thas got stuck back here, getting hit by the APOC, and just couldn't catch back up to the fight by the end of it, um, which is rough. Um, I think that it was a difficult APOC to avoid. Um, probably just, I mean, just something that you, uh, I mean, I, I think you could have avoided it. It's, it's tough. I, I'm not going to put a lot of blame on you there for avoiding it. You guys, you have, cause especially since you came down and, and Bay and, um, and Woody had a really good reactionary play to save, um, Uther from getting deleted here. Uh, but also, uh, I made one small mistake that cost me a Lee Ming kill, unfortunately. So, he gets vision. Does a small combo on Haze. Haze gets blown up by Lee Ming and Grand Main. And then I come down here and I... <laughs> um, I Dragon Blade. And I don't... I guess I didn't expect the D-Shield because I thought Haze was going to back out of the fight. Because um, he was so low. But I actually used one of my Dragon... Sw uh, dragon sort uh, Dragon Blade swipes to get out of APOC when I had... <laughs> But I had a D-Shield on me, which uh, actually cost me right there. This Li Ming just qu doesn't quite die. <laughs> and then she gets ancestral, which is painful. But not the end of the world. Uh, overall, we come, we come out on top, just health bar wise. And it allows us to secure this. As far as I know, I actually didn't watch this far. I assume this is how we get the Dragon Knight. I guess we'll find out together. Zag goes up. Yep, Zag goes up. We stall in the shrine for long enough. And then we actually sack Bay here again. This is actually another smart play. Um, me and Hayes did not need to turn back in suicide, and we didn't. Um, we get the dragon, and they just let it go. Let it go. Frozen style. And this is another good call. Um, because I remember, specifically in comms, um, we knew we were we knew they were letting the Dragon Knight go. And Dragon Knight's full health because it has a minion wave. And we just said, don't let them back. <laughs> so we see Malfail's trying to back there. And we're just not letting them. Because you go sidewall keep, great call. And you go straight onto the core. And it's just the end of the game. I mean, like, we know we don't even have to win this fight. I think we end up doing a pretty good job. I believe we come out one for one in the end, which is pretty great. Because right now we're 3v5. Yeah, Malfail's mega low. I don't really have a lot of complaints about this fight. Because there's no way... We didn't really even intend to win it. We just did not want them to get home. <laughs> yep, yeah, force out Ancestral. Grain main's in the back line. Yeah, we do get this Grain main. I'm not actually sure who's curious to kill. Oh, it was, it was Woody. Good job. And that's it. That's all she wrote. We win the game. Doesn't even matter that Uther and, Uther and Kalthos went down. So, overall, I think that we... Obviously, there's a lot of mistakes in this game. Um, but I don't think it was as many as 
we anticipated. I think it was just a few small good plays by the other team or a few small misplays by our team. Um, but in the end, we we played the situation correctly and, and won the game because of it. And even if the, the Dragon Knight doesn't get the, the core there, the game's not over. So really, we're not playing it that poorly at all. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the game. Um, and I think there's, but I do think there's a lot to learn from it. So.